an individual is going to eat this with this, but these points are going to be jagged, right? It's not going to be smooth like a flame. It's going to be jagged because of the torment that the animal is going through when they get slaughtered. And then that goes into the meat. And then you eat that energy. Then you want to know why our people out here act like animals or whatever. Right? But as, but as I understand, our bodies are not designed to digest. Right. Meat that too. At such a quick rate. Right, right. That too. On top of all the other stuff, that as well. Because we're herbivores, not carnivores. That's why we don't have canines. Right. When when we're shaking, making, frying our hair, right. whether it's <laughs> with the chemicals or with the uh, with. or with the curling iron or whatever you right. again, that's another form of excessive heat. Yes. Another form of heat, yes. another form or yeah. another form. Or, or a lower form. Because too much heat, just like anything else. Different form, right. Yeah. Like anything, you're, you're, you're purifying gold or, or, or you're working with, you have to work to change things into another form, you have to like Right. So, is there a correlation between loss of energy or well, well, heat transfer? Like, because I'm, I'm looking at this as if I'm doing this to my hair, if I'm applying heat to my hair, am I also changing its ability? To right. It's it's biological makeup. Yeah. 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 This is this is this is why um, when when you when we're doing um, perm and stuff like that. The burn isn't just the chemicals. The burn is that thing that you're talking about. You're changing the biological makeup of something that comes from nature. Like hair is not, hair is, a, is part, of, part of human physiology. It's not some external thing. So once you, you know, put certain energy, and then again, remember that it's just like um, you leave the frog in the pot and you turn it up, then you'll cook them. If you throw them in the hot water, you'll jump right out. Right. So if, if they're not using the heat gradually on their hair, if they're not using the heat in, in, in graduation, then you're going to get what you're talking about. You know, um, um, taking, a, taking a, a radio from Canada, go to China, plug it in, you're going to blow stuff up because it's a different ampage. So exact same thing. And once, once you know, we get into natural hair, the heat, the only heat is going to be from, from the sun. But it's a controlled heat. It's, it's, it's not excessive. Right, it's right. It's excessive heat that will then change our energy. Right, because right. Right. Everybody would, 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 would be on chill time. They right. They couldn't manufacture enough energy to cool their body. Right. And still, and still do, do whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Function. So, right. Okay. Because right. Because I think a lot of people who have had, they've had natural hair before, then they perm their hair. Yeah. They always say that no matter how long their hair has been natural, after that they pass. It's different. It's like you have a memory. Your yeah. Your hair has that, you say it's a nervous extension of our nerves. Right, right. It yeah. It has a memory. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's going to be some type of dynamics. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so application of excessive heat right. to change the energy so much that our hair will never be the same. Unless we apply some spiritual values or systems that can heal it to get back to it. Right, right. Because, it, you know, and, and it's, it's similar to, um, you know, somebody realized something's wrong. Now they want to go organic. You, know, you should have been doing that prior to you realizing something's up. Right? Um, it has been proven scientifically. People who have long hair tend to be less tired, more energetic, less likely to, to become depressed. People who have long hair also conserve energy and don't feel the cold of winter. That one's real. The people... <laughs> <laughs> the same as people with short hair. 
A person who has short hair wastes the body's energy. Think of the story of Samson and Delilah in the Bible. He lost his hair, blah, you already know. Um, to, humili to humiliate the conquered people of China, Genghis Khan made them cut their hair and wear bangs over their forehead. Right? right and then cover the pineal gland. And then the same thing with, with when you see the, um, the Sikhs or whoever, their, their turbans are wrapped so that the pineal gland is exposed. Anybody who has a culture, they always expose the pineal gland. People who don't know what they're doing, they just, <laughs> and, and think that, yeah, that's culture. And then people who know, because remember, our ancient foremothers and forefathers taught them that you gotta tie it and leave the pineal open because the pineal is one of the most powerful glands in the body, blah, 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 blah. They know this. So when we exhibit that we don't know, either, we're stupid people, because they're the ones that taught us. So if, 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 if somebody has a turban wrap messed up, and then there's somebody with a turban wrapped with some uniformity, and then that individual knows that, well, the individual with the messed up stuff taught me how to wrap it like this, then they're not taking that individual serious. They, they're going to ridicule them, discriminate them, do whatever it is that they do, because clearly these people don't know their self. And if you don't know yourself, then you're leaving yourself open for victimization by, you know, vampires and whoever else is out there looking to suck off of dead stuff. You remember, everything black is relative to death. Funerals, you're going to wear black and all that. If you get gangrene, you're going to go black. Black plague, because people's fingers, toes, and all that stuff turn black. Most poisonous spider, black one. Most poisonous snake, black one. So there's this, there's this negative energy on black things, right? Couple more slides and we should be done. And this was relative to dreads, right? Now, again, when we look at these people, we can see that you know, with the exception of probably those three, maybe her too, they're fairly lighter than everybody else, right? They're darker than everybody else, I mean, right? Those, those four, right? Which goes back to the same thing that we were talking about with the straight hair. Now we can apply that to pigmentation. When did the light stuff come in? Was everybody, was everybody in ancient times, like, pitch black, and then we graduated to being brown and then lighter brown and lighter lighter whatever or were all these people always here some of them with hair that looks like this even though they're that complexion some of them dark as us but with straight hair and you know what i mean um but this was just relative to the whole thing with the dreadlocks don't let people call your stuff dreads or whatever as soon as they start to pull those ones just shut them down antennas don't let them say dreads or dreadlocks or anything negative, because again, words cast spells. Natural hair is often called a person's crowning glory, which goes back again to wrapping the hair on the top, is really a crown, right? Or if you just have the hair natural and it's out, it's still a crown. Um, while the term often refers to qualities like color and shine, spiritual, spiritually, it means so much more. The hair covers the crown chakra, our connection to the spirit or the higher self. It can serve as a reminder of our connection with the divine. Think of it as a beautiful bridge between you and the source. Consider your hair as a conduit to the universe. Consider your hair as a conduit to the universe. So the universe is begging you to be natural. So it has somewhere to direct this energy that it's going to emit. Whether you pick up on it or not, that's up to the individual. But the universe is going to be sending energy out. The universe is going to fill your cup. The question is, do you have a cup? And if you don't, you better find a way to get this energy because, you know, it's 26,000 years of this thing going on. This is going to be going on, where the energy is going to be sending this frequency to all the planets, 
right? Which also ties into make sure that you know your, astro your astrology, make sure you know, or make sure you get done your natal chart so you can know your sun, know your moon, know your rising, know which energies you should be around certain times when you shouldn't be around or whatever like that, when to use electronics, when to leave electronics alone because the universe is saying leave them alone right now, right? When you hear people's phone blow up and stuff like that, it's not battery problem and all that. The universe is sending energy and everything is picking it up. Hair is picking it up, phone picking them up, all these antennas on top buildings picking it up. Everything's picking up on energy and it's how is it being used? How is it being transferred? Because remember, energy can't be destroyed. It's only transferred or used. But you can't destroy it, you can't waste it. it. It is. The autobiography of a yogi teaches the spinal cord is like an upturned tree with man's hair as its roots and afferent and efferent nerves as branches. Elsewhere, Yoganda explains, like an upturned plant, man similarly absorbs through his hair electric currents helpful to the body. Swami Kriyanda expands on his thought in his book, Raj Yoga. Yogis say that the long hair draws more energy to the brain. They describe the body as an inverted tree with the spine as the trunk, the nervous system as the branches, and the hair as the roots. Hair also directs sun energy to our frontal lobes where meditation takes place. These receptors act as conduits, once again, that, that word, right, conduit, that allows greater amounts of cosmic energy. The best way to energize your aura and brain cells, stimulate the pineal gland, once again, rishi knot. Either wrap the hair up, pull it up, and tie it that way, right? Instead of, you know, because they always tell, they always tell us ponytail, we we're not ponies. Pull it up this way and put your rubber band on that way. Just like we had in, right? Put the hair up on the top of the head. And then whatever happens after that, then, you know, do whatever. All right. In the yogi perception, hair is a remarkable, remarkable gift of nature that raises the kundalini energy. You should check that out if you haven't. Or creative life force and increases vitality, intuition, and tranquility. When the hair on your head is allowed to attain its full mature length, then phosphorus, calcium, and vitamin D are all produced and enter the lymphatic fluid and eventually the spinal fluid through the two ducts on the top of the brain. This ionic change creates more efficient memory and leads to greater physical energy, improved stamina, and patience. And you could check this website out, fractalenlightenment.com. During the Vietnam War, Special Forces in the War Department had sent undercover experts to look for talented, recruits among Native Americans who were blessed with special supernatural and tracking abilities. The tracking abilities. A couple of American Indians were selected. What happened after is surprising. Once they were recruited, their natural skills and ability access their sixth sense just disappears. On conducting a test to find out what went wrong, the older Native American recruits said that after undergoing military haircuts, they could no longer sense the enemy. So when you think about the military and the army and why they tell people shave their hair is because their natural skills and ability, their six senses, whatever like that, disappears. And once the people who are in control of the army get them to lose their direct connection to the universe, to their ancestors, to whatever, now they can put whatever they want in their brain. 